What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games, and today we got some news to talk about from the One Piece TCG. So let's have a look at some news from the One Piece TCG. Starting off with the fact that they have gone and issued a bit of an apology for some cards that they have gone and revealed from OP07. Bearing in mind, of course, OP07 isn't actually out yet. But of course, it's out fairly soon. It's not going to be long till we see this in shops. It's actually releasing on the 24th of February. That is 10 days from now. And what that means is that the cards have already gone to print. And although nobody's seen the problem yet, the problem is definitely coming. And One Piece have gone and issued an apology. Straight out the back. And what's that was... They've messed up a couple of the illustrations. Basically, what's happened is that they've sent the wrong illustration to the printers. And again, we're at the stage now. Like The, the cards are released in 10 days. These were printed a while ago. They don't print the cards a few days before release. Cards are being printed weeks and weeks before release. And essentially, what's happened is that they've gone and had a look and gone, oh, well, these, these are being printed now. And, um... Yeah, we already know this is a bit of a problem. And I just want to give a bit of love to Bandai here for going, we have discovered a problem. What we're going to do is we're going to actually tell people about this. Warn people about this so they know that it's coming. So take Monkey the Luffy as an example. They've, they've given us, and I love this, right? They've given us the card and they've given us the wrong one. As in the one which is going to be in printed. And you'll notice that they've gone and circled the problems. And if you have a look, yeah. Basically, there's a couple of blobs that shouldn't be there. There's some colour missing at the bottom. There's a blobby thing in the top left that shouldn't be there. And essentially, look, I'm going to be honest with you, right? I'm pretty knowledgeable about One Piece at this point. And I'm pretty knowledgeable about TCGs. My knowledge of art is poor, to be honest with you. Uh, apparently they were unable to perform mask processing on layer data. So, I know that art is generally created with lots of layers. Something's gone wrong in one of the layers, and that means that we've ended up with this. Now, here's the interesting thing, and we've seen this in other card games, so I do need to mention this. They have specifically said this will be corrected for future prints. Which means that this and the other card we'll get to in a minute... There are going to be two versions of it. There's going to be the corrected version and the uncorrected version. And actually, if you have a little bit of a look at the release they put out here, this kanji literally means correct and this kanji means mistake. So my rudimentary Japanese is not po I cannot read what's on the screen here perfectly by any stretch. But I've got a bit of Japanese going on here and this is kind of interesting to me. We don't know what the numbers are going to be. There is a decent chance that one of these Luffy cards ends up being rarer and more valuable than the others. I wish I could tell you which one it is. The rule is very simple. If they correct it early and the majority of cards are corrected, then the mistake will be the rarer, more valuable one. If, however, the mistake is corrected very late and they don't print many of the corrected one, then the corrected one is going to be the rarer and therefore more valuable. It all depends on how many print runs they do before and after correcting the mistake. But this is a super rare Luffy card. People love Luffy. Super rare pull rates, I mean, they're good, don't get me wrong, but they're obviously you know, lower than the other cards, except secret rares and old hearts. So there is a chance, and I can't tell you which way round it's going to go, but there is a chance that one of these Luffy cards actually ends up being more valuable than the other by a bit of a margin. Because either it's the uncorrected one and most of them are corrected, or it's a corrected one and most of them are a mistake. I have seen both happen in, for instance, Pokemon. I've seen it where the mistake is corrected quickly and it's quite rare to have the mistake. And I've seen the mistake corrected late and it's actually quite rare to have the real one. But this is not the only card where it's actually happened. It's also happened with Tanaka-san. And this one is a bit less dramatic, I'll be honest with you. It's just they left a bit of a background on one of the bows on the floor. That, that's it. And 
it actually looks kind of horrendous honestly <laughs> like it looks really bad so this one you can kind of understand where they've gone with this and look this one isn't a super rare and it's not a luffy so i'm gonna be perfectly honest with you it is um not as exciting frankly it's not gonna get as many people interested but it is still gonna be a. Uh, but well one of these is gonna be rare we just don't know which way round it is. This stuff fascinates me, and I get a lot, you know, it's happening in other card games. And I always get comments from people like, well, how does this happen? And I'm like, well, easily, frankly. Like, we've all made mistakes at our jobs. We've all done it. Most of the time, we make mistakes in our job, and we fix it nice and easily, and it's out there. I have made mistakes in some videos. Problem with the mistakes I make in videos is that the videos are kind of out there, and it's too late to change them, and then I look silly forever. And this happens. We've all made mistakes in our jobs. This is one of those. There are a couple of cards that were messed up this time round. Happens, honestly. So, yeah, this is where we are. And interestingly, I should have noticed this before because the version they tweeted out, and they, they do tweet it out on the official thing here, on the official Twitter handle, the version they tweeted out is actually the incorrect version, the mistake. And it looks like it. Like, nobody can look. And I don't know how I didn't notice this before. And I'm slightly embarrassed I didn't notice this before. I should have. But I've told you now. We've talked about it now. We can move on. It's kind of nice that Bandai have come out before the cards are actually in hand. And gone, look, we've made a mistake. Here it is. We're going to correct it for future runs. I appreciate that personally. And it's going to create some collectible cards. So that's kind of nice. Another thing that's happened, and this is something which I've been looking for an opportunity to get here. We need to have a quick look at the FAQ for Starter Deck 11. The Uta Starter Deck came out last week. And the problem is that I don't have enough here to make its own video. There aren't many ruling queries from Starter Deck 11. But I still want to show you the ruling queries from Starter Deck 11. So we've got a couple of minutes here, and I know it's not thematically that tied to the mistaken art. You know what? Let's talk about it here, because we need to talk about it at some point. There are exactly two rulings, one of which is Uta, the leader itself. Now, remember Uta's skill says that once during your turn, Don X1, when attacking, look at the top card of your deck. If it's a film card, put it into your hand. Put the rest of the cards at the bottom of your deck in any order. And of course, I showed you a winning Uta deck yesterday. Uta literally won the Japan Championships, which was kind of awesome. And actually, if you have a look at the winning deck here, it's very, very, very film focused. We saw that there were four Captain Kid, but it's a really good Captain Kid from OPO1 that basically protects all your characters. So it's phenomenal for protecting your things like your film Nami, which is going to be your searcher. But also it lets you play a character for free. And you can, for instance, use this to play a Dracul Mihawk for free. Which can then be used to play a Brook for free. Which can then be used to play something else for free. Which is ridiculous. It's a very good card. And actually while we're here, Dracul Mihawk is the other one. That was played as a two of. So in the winning deck from Japan Nationals, there were basically 44 cards in the deck that were film. And six that weren't. And the point of telling you this is to say it is very... You've got like an 88% chance that the card you look at is going to be a film card. Now, strictly speaking, it's not actually an 88% chance because you're going to be using Nami as a searcher, which is going to take film cards out of your deck. So using this skill makes it slightly less likely to hit a film and more likely to hit one of the other six, which can be searched out with Uta. But you see where I'm going with this, all right? And the question, of course, was... What happens if there are no other cards? Like, you look at the top card of your deck, and it is a film card like you would be expecting. What happens if there are no cards to put on the bottom of your deck? Then you don't. All right? You just don't. Simple as that. If it is a film card, you put it into your hand. If it's not a film card, you put it on the bottom of your deck. And if you put it into your hand, you put the remaining cards on the bottom of your deck. There just aren't any. There we go. 
And there's one more rule inquiry. It comes from New Genesis. Now, that is one of the new event cards. And it's a one-cost card. If your leader is Uta, look at free cards on the top of your deck. Find a film card other than New Genesis and add it to your hand. And then put the rest at the bottom of your deck in any order. And put up to one of your Don cards as active. And the question, and this is a really fun card, right? Because it's a one cost. And then you do your little search. And then you put a Don active. So as long as you've got an active Don, this is a free card. You pay a Don, do the search, and then you just activate the Don. So it's fine. Question being, if I don't add a film card to my hand, i.e. if I don't get a target, if there are no film cards there, do I still get to set one of my Don cards as active? Yes. Absolutely. Because you've got to do the search to set your Don as active. But setting your Don to active is not reliant on the search being successful. Just on you having done the search. It says, then place the rest at the bottom of your deck. But it does say, reveal up to one film type card and add it to your hand. Well, up to one clearly means either one or zero. And then after that, you put the rest at the bottom of your deck in any order. So if you don't find one, you've still done the search you still get to put the Don active, which is actually super duper important here because it means that you actually still, you're not paying. Like otherwise failing the search would cost you a Don, you wouldn't get your Don back. That would actually really suck. Not the case here. Job's a good one. Right, there we go. We've had an official apology for some card art, which is going to actually create some rare cards. And we've got some ruling queries from Starter Deck 11 we hadn't looked at yet. So we've looked at now. And now it's over to you guys. Tell me what you think about this. Tell me what you think about this art. Tell me if you're going to be going after the uncorrected art. Tell me anything you want to tell me in the comment section. Go nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video. Subscribe to this channel. Follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk about One Piece and card games and all kinds of fun things. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, join a Discord, and all kinds of fun things. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wassy Plays.